share a little about um, Nipatma, which is this conceptual space that I consider home, liminal space, um, but also the space that I think my existence and my practice sit in. Um, and the word Nepala is an indigenous Nahuatl word that I was exposed to by way of Brown's other words literature. Um, first the text Borderland, later this bitch we call home. Um, and I'll just say a bit about the concept. So from the indigenous language, Nahuatl, Nepantla means in the middle of it and is described by Ndaldu as the overlapping space between different perceptions and belief systems. I see Nepantla as reflective of essential truth, contrasting coexistence. The simultaneous presence of elements seen as separate and or competing or contradictory. As a person of black, African, and white European descent, this conceptual frame feels familiar to me. It feels like home and consciously occupying this complex racial and cultural space has provided countless opportunities to deepen my understanding of myself and the world around me. In her book, In the Wake, on Blackness and Being, Black Studies and English Literature scholar Christina Sharp gives language to the multidimensional aftermath of the transatlantic slave trade. The Wake. Sharp uses the wake as a means of understanding how slavery's violences emerge within the contemporary conditions of spatial, legal, psychic, material, and other dimensions of black, non-being, as well as in black modes of resistance. In the same way that being a so-called mixed-race black person is at the core of my black American experience, Nepantla is the precise location of my personal experience of living in the wake. There are many ways black historians and scholars have made sense of this concept across time. W.E.B. Du Bois terms the complex state of mind typically experienced by black Americans, double consciousness. As Du Bois describes it, the Negro is gifted with second sight in this American world. It is a peculiar sensation, this double consciousness, this sense of always looking at oneself through the eyes of others, of measuring one's soul by the tape of a world that looks on in amused contempt and pity. One ever feels his two-ness, an American, a Negro, two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings. Two warring ideals in one dark body, whose dogged strength alone keeps it from being torn asunder. This duality, inevitable for most thinking, feeling black folks in the United States, has a way of becoming more amplified when perceived through an intersectional lens. Black women, for example, experience the intersecting complexity of being women in a patriarchal culture, in tandem with being black people in a racist culture. Following this line of thinking, mixed race people with African Euro and European lineages experience the intersecting complexity of being black in a racist culture while also inheriting and carrying the ways in which their whiteness and their proximity to whiteness plays out. Nepantla is another way of calling the space in which double consciousness exists. And so, um, in response to living in a world that has and okay. so I grew up in a very white suburb just shy of 10 miles north of Boston, uh, which is itself an incredibly segregated and uh, I find pretty conservative city. Um, and I was born to a European American mother and an African American father um, in 1984 in the Northeastern United States. And there was not space carved out for someone like me to exist um, in uh, any kind of complete or full way. It was a highly normative place, a very suffocating, stifling, uh, ignorant, limited, um, 
xenophobic, homophobic, racist, sexist, um, yeah, <laughs> a stew of things, and I felt very different from a young age, and, um, I did feel very much in the caught in a space between and experienced that as a challenge, as a negative, as a struggle, um, at least until I got out of that city and was able to find some more people who felt reflective um, and to have teachers But I share that because um, it exacerbated my experience of this concept of double consciousness or this existence in the space of Nikantla. Um, because I felt incredibly isolated in that experience. Um, and what I have come to learn, I didn't understand it at that time in my life when I was a teenager before I left that city. I didn't understand my creative practice as refuge, um, as home, and I see crystal clearly now that um, creative expression has created